write your own training loop in PyTorch. In this video, we'll look at how we can do the same fine tuning as in the trainer video, but without relying on that class. This way, you'll be able to easily customize each step of the training loop to your needs. This is also very useful to manually debug something that went wrong with the trainer API. Before we dive into the code, here is a sketch of a training loop. We take a batch of training data and feed it to the model. With the labels, we can get compute a loss. That number is not useful on its own, but is used to compute the gradients of our model weights. That is, the derivative of the loss with respect to each model weight. Those gradients are then used by the optimizer to update the model weights and make them a little bit better. We then repeat the process with a new batch of training data. If any of this isn't clear, don't hesitate to take a refresher on your favorite deep learning course. We'll use the glue MRPC dataset here again, and we've seen how to preprocess the data using the datasets library with dynamic padding. Check out the videos linked below if you haven't seen them already. With this done, we only have to define PyTorch data loaders, which will be responsible to convert the elements of our dataset into patches. We use our data collator for padding as the collate function and shuffle the training set to make sure we don't go over the samples in the same order at each epoch. To check that everything works as intended, we try to grab a batch of data and inspect it. Like our dataset elements, it's a dictionary, but this time the values are not a single list of integers, but a tensor of shape batch size by sequence length. The next step is to send the training data in our model. For that, we'll need to actually create our model. As seen in the model API video, we use the from pretrain method and adjust the number of labels to the number of classes we have on this dataset. Here, two. Again, to be sure everything is going well, we pass the batch we grabbed to our model and check there is no error. If the labels are provided, the models of the transformers library always return the loss directly. We'll be able to do loss.backward to compute all the gradients and we'll then need an optimizer to do the training step. We use the AdamW optimizer here, which is a variant of Adam with proper weight decay, but you can pick any PyTorch optimizer you like. Using the previous loss and computing the gradients with loss.backward, we check that we can do the optimizer step without any error. Don't forget to zero your gradient afterwards, or at the next step, we'll get added to the gradients you computed. We could already write our training loop, but we'll add two more things to make it as good as it can be. The first one is a learning rate scheduler to progressively decay our learning rate to zero. The getScheduler function from the Transformers library is just a convenience function to easily build such a scheduler. You can again use any PyTorch learning rate scheduler instead. Finally, if you want our training to take a couple of minutes instead of a few hours, we'll need to use a GPU. The first step is to get one, for instance, by using a Collab notebook. Then, you need to actually send your model and training data on it by using a torch device. Double check the following lines point a CUDA device for you or be prepared for your training to last more than an hour. We can now put everything together. First, we put our model in training mode, which will activate the training behavior for some layers, like dropout. Then we go through the number of epochs we picked and all the data in our training data loader. Then we go through all the steps we've seen already. Send the data to the GPU, compute the model outputs, and in particular, the loss. Use the loss to compute gradients, then make a training step with the optimizer. Update the learning rate in our scheduler for the next iteration, and zero the gradients of the optimizer. Once this is finished, we can evaluate our model very easily with a metric from the datasets library. First, we put our model in evaluation mode to deactivate layers like dropout, then go through all the data in the evaluation data loader. As we've seen in the trainer video, the model outputs logits, and we need to apply the argmac function to convert them into predictions. The metric object then has an add batch method we can use to send it those intermediate predictions. When the evaluation loop is finished, we just have to call the compute method to get our final results. Congratulations! You have now fine-tuned the model all by yourself.